Good day, viewers. I am Erika Pretorius. Welcome to Lesson 3 for History, Grade 10 and 11 for the Namco series. Today's topic is the War of National Resistance. And our focus for today is the Nama Rising from 1904 to 1907. After this lesson, you should be able to describe and explain the Nama Rising from 1904 to 1907. Viewers, we need to realize that the War of National Resistance consists of three parts. One, the Herero Uprising. Two, the Nama Uprising. And three, the aftermath. Today, we will specifically look at the Nama Uprising. This lesson is divided into different parts. The first part is the background of the Nama and German relationship. The second part is Witboe standing up and revolting against the Germans. The third part is Marenga continuing the fight. And the last part is the consequences of the war for the Nama. Now let's look at the background of the Nama and the German relationship. Witbo had signed a treaty with Germans in 1894. He also assisted them after the letter written to him by Samuel Maherero for assistance was confiscated by the Germans. Let us look at how Witbo revolted against the Germans. In October 1904, Hendrik Witboy started an uprising against all local white farmers and German colonialists. On 14 November 1904, he wrote a letter to Leutwein in which he states that he believed that it was God's will that he should break the treaty with the Germans. Hendrik Witboy was joined by the following groups in war. 1. The Fransmans of Kochas under the leadership of Simon Kuiper. 2. The Rue Nazi under the leadership of Manasse. 3. The Fjallskundraj under the leadership of Hans Hendrik. 4. The Bondel Swartz under the leadership of Johannes Christian. 5. Jacob Marenga and the majority of Bethanians. The groups who refused to join were the Reuboth Busters, Paul Friedrichs from Bethany, Christian Goliath from Persepa, and Kietman Swip Namas. Witboy led Namaland against the Germans well. The Namas used the guerrilla warfare tactics to fight the Germans. This means that instead of fighting big battles, they made use of hit and run attacks on smaller German groups. They often attacked the enemy at night and disappeared quickly before the enemy had time to fight back. During this time, the Nama had more or less 200 attacks on the Germans. After a year of brutal fighting, Hendrik Witboy was killed at the age of 80 near Falgras on 21 October 1905. He was buried in an unmarked grave. The other leaders continued to fight, but the Nama people lost most of their fighting spirit after their great leader, died. Some of the leaders surrendered in 1906, but Simon Cooper and Jakob Marenga continued fighting. Now, let's look at how Marenga continued fighting. Jakob Marenga was known as the Black Napoleon by the Germans. He was a guerrilla soldier who had attacked German settlers and supply wagons in southern Namibia. He inspired others to join his army, even if they were from different communities. 
From 1905 to 1907, Marenga led many attacks against the Germans. Now, do you understand why Marenga was referred to as the Black Napoleon? It was because he was a nuisance to the Germans and made many attacks. However, the German army was strong and ruthless. Marenga was shot in 1907 and in 1908, Kuoper, which set up his base in Pechuana land, agreed to stop fighting. In 1907, the German government declared the war to be over. Now we are going to look at the consequences the war had for the Nama. The war ended in 1907. This was a devastating and expensive war in Namibia. There was a massive decrease in the Nama population. Before the war, it was estimated that there were 18,000 Namas and by the end of the war, the number dropped to 10,000. Some of the Nama were deported to the German colonies such as Togo and Cameroon, where they died of tropical diseases. Others were sent to concentration camps and prisons, such as Shark Island at Ludritz, where they died of the cold, lung diseases and malnutrition. They were also regularly beaten and abused. The rest of the survivors were forced to become laborers for white settlers. Remember that the war of national resistance had effects on both the Nama and the Herero communities. This is known as the aftermath. Remember that there is currently a legal case at the UN where the Nama and Herero descendants are seeking retribution from the German government for the devastation that the Nama and Herero people suffered during this period of time. One of the ways in which this retribution has taken place is the return of the Bible and whip of Hendrik Witboy from Germany to Namibia in 2019. This took place at a ceremony in Gibeon. Here are some final tips for our lesson on source work. Study source A. How reliable is the source? Use the information and your knowledge to explain your answer. Source A. For I was attending on him and calling on him to dry our tears in his own time. God from heaven has now broken the treaty. A letter from Hendrik Witboy to Leutwein dated 14 November 1904. Before we start with a question, let's first look at the source. We need to understand each word of the source in order to fully understand the question. The word I in the source refers to vidboy. The word attending means listening or dealing with. Him in the source refers to God. The word our refers to the Herero and the Nama people. Tears in the source means they were crying because of the suffering or hardships under the Germans. Now broken in the source refers to terminate or end the agreement. When answering the questions in paper 2, it is important to test the reliability of the source to obtain maximum marks. 1. Choose reliable or not reliable. 2. Now explain why the source is reliable or not reliable. 3. Consider the following for testing reliability of the source. Look at the author. Where does this source come from? And why? The purpose. The author published this source. Ask yourself, 
how could the author benefit from this source? Also consider the date. When was the source created? Why was it created in this time frame? According to your knowledge, what happened at this time in history? Then consider the audience. Who was his or her intended audience? Is the source created to change attitudes or convince the audience about something? Now, let's look at each of these tips mentioned before. 1. The author. The author is Vitboy, the Nama leader who wrote this letter. Ask yourself why. 2. The date of the source is 14 November 1914. Again, ask yourself why. The audience. The audience was Leutwein or the Germans. Ask yourself why. Now, the author of this source is Witboy, who wrote this letter to inform that he was ending the agreement with the Germans. The date he is writing on 14 November 1914 during the War of National Resistance because God answered his prayer. Now, look at the audience. He wrote to Leutwein or the Germans that he will fight them. Now let us look at an example answer. The source is reliable. Witboy wrote this letter to Leutwein or the Germans on 14 November 1914 during the War of National Resistance. He warned them because God answered his prayer to end the agreement with the Germans and to tell them that he will fight them. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson, that you are making progress with source work. See you in the next lesson.